Hey everyone, Silver Steeler here. And Winning Image Photography. So it was time to do a Morgan Dollar video collection update. I've got many new additions and upgrades. We've purged the entire collection of any clean coins and in front of you are 56 different date and mint marks needed out of the 95 business strikes, not counting that 95 Philadelphia. So, how do you like our magic carpet ride? <laughs> then let's get right into this. Eighteen seventy eight Philadelphia eight tail feathers. All right, the 1878 Philadelphia Eight Tail Feathers. I believe I picked this up down in the French Quarter in New Orleans. So let's take a look at those Eight Tail Feathers. Very nice. They didn't mint this for terribly too long. They're generally worth more than a regular 1878 Philly. The seven over eight tail feathers is another good one to have. I do not have that one yet, but I do have the 1878 Philadelphia eight tail feathers. Eighteen seventy eight Philadelphia. And here is one of winning image photography's favorite Morgans. Go ahead. Yeah, it doesn't do it justice. It really but... doesn't. It's an 1878 Philadelphia. It's got the seven tail feathers, but the Tony on this coin. Well, looks better. When you're holding it, I don't know how well that camera picks it up. Um, I mean, it's blue and pink and purple and orange with a little bit of green. One of her favorites. All right, on to the next coin. 1878 Carson City PCGS. MS-63 Proof Flight. So the 1878 Carson City PCGS MS-63 Proof Like. Spent a little bit on this one. But you got to have that first year. And Proof Like is a good way of having it. Of course, both sides need to be proof-like in order for it to be designated as such. And this one is. Beautiful Carson City. All right, on to the next coin. 1878 San Francisco, NGC. MS-64. 1878, San Francisco MS-64. Now, a lot of these San Francisco early years survived. Their survivability was up. And they really were making some nice strikes of these. So you can find the 78, 79, 80, 81, and 82 S's relatively a good price and in great condition because all of them survived fairly well and they just were making some nice strikes so nice to have san francisco's first year in a grade graded ms64 well very nice fields on this coin very nice it's almost very, proof like just not quite yeah it's a tick especially on the obverse well, anyway on to the next coin 
1879, Philadelphia. Eighteen seventy nine, Philadelphia. Beautiful shape. I know in past videos I've said before that I'd give this a grade and blah blah blah. I'm just going to call it B or A U now, or if they're worse in that condition. But most all of these I have are B U and A U, and I believe I have purged all my Morgans from any clean coins. That. Very nice strike on that coin there. Your eighteen seventy nine, Philadelphia. Eighteen seventy nine, New Orleans. Eighteen seventy nine, Orleans. So the first year New Orleans started striking Morgans. You know, for the longest time, I didn't think I had one of these. I was going to coin shows, searching for them, and for some reason I just kept skipping this one off my list, thinking I needed one. I was about ready to pop on one a couple weeks ago, and I realized, hey, I do have one. AUBU condition. So the first year from New Orleans. 1879, San Francisco from the Redfield Collection. 1879 S in the Redfield holder, or better known as the Paramount holder. It has to say on it, from the Redfield Collection. And of course, they gave it an MS-65, which, you know, eh, they were in the early infancy of grading back in those days. And so an MS-65 really was a lot something different. I believe it's more of a 64. Winning thinks it's a 65. Remember, if you have one of these Paramount holders, it has to say that for it to be from the Redfield collection. And someday we want to do a video on the whole story of Redfield because it's really interesting. He was an interesting character for sure. So it's nice to have this 1879S and a Paramount holder from the Redfield collection. On to the next one. 1880, Philadelphia. 1880, Philadelphia. BU condition. Another nice strike. The back is very nice as well. Nothing spectacular, but... Still, a nice Morgan nonetheless. On to the next one. 1880, New Orleans. 1880, Orleans. So their second year striking them. It's got some reflectivity in it, but not even close enough to be considered a proof like. It's in pretty good condition. The back actually looks like it has more of a mirror field on it than what the front did, but a lot of luster coming off the eagle. Not bad for an Orleans strike, which, you know, they tended not to strike them as well as all the other mints. So, not a bad example. To the next one. 
1880, San Francisco, NGC, MS-64. 1880, San Francisco, NGC, MS-64. Like I said, this continues my 78 to 79 I have in a red field. So here's the 80 San Francisco, and I also have the 81 and 80S. All those in, in MS-64, except I don't know really what the red field grade is, but it's still a very nice example too. So I have those first five-year runs of San Francisco, and I have some very nice examples of it. And this one is the same. It's got some really decent mirroring going on, but not enough again to get it at designation. But a lot of these San Francisco's look very lustrous, and this is a fine example of that. To the next coin. Eighteen eighty one, Philadelphia. Eighteen eighty one, Philadelphia. I tend to have a lot of these early eighties, especially from Philly and Raw. They're easy to find. Vintages were high on this on these, and a lot of them have survived. So an easy BU example to get. Don't know if I'd necessarily have this one graded. I would probably find a better example further down the road and have that one. But for now, it's a nice BU hole filler. The 1881 Philadelphia. 1881, New Orleans. 1881, Orleans. A nice New Orleans example. In fact, this one's really got some nice luster to it. For a raw coin. I think that one would definitely grade out rather well. Very pretty. Till now, probably my finest New Orleans example. It's a beautiful coin. I don't really know if I have a lot of upgrading I would want to really do with this one. So, to the next one. 1881, San Francisco, NGC. MS-64. 1881 San Francisco, NGC MS-64. San Francisco still pumping out some very nice specimens back in that day. As I almost always did. And again, this continues that early series of San Francisco's that are easily, easily obtainable, affordable, and they really just look spectacular. 1881. Definitely a mint that does a fine job, especially back then. All right, to the next one. 1882, Philadelphia. 1882 Philadelphia. Again, these earlier Philadelphias, a lot of them made when they survived, quite a few of them. So, really easy to get one of these in BU condition. Super affordable. You know, I'm sure my LCS probably gave this one to me for 25 bucks, probably, maybe. A very nice strike from Philadelphia. Your 1882 Philly. 
1882, New Orleans. 1882, Orleans. Another fine example. AUBU. Yeah, they didn't always put out the best of strikes, and I think this one follows somewhat in that realm. But when it comes to upgrading this, this won't be one of the first I do. And it's, you know, very nice hole filler, just the way she is. Eighteen eighty two Carson City in the GSA holder. 1882 Carson City out of the GSA holder. Of course, out of those varieties, you very much would want the uncirculated silver dollar holder, which is what I've got. You know, you can take a guess at what the grade would be, and I just try not to do that. I, I know this would grade fairly well. You know, nothing spectacular, but these have been cherry-picked a long time ago. I just had to have me one of these holders. You know, it's a good Carson City. They'll cost you a couple hundred bucks, right around 200, and I think that's very close to what I paid for this. Maybe a little bit less, but not too far less. You know, they're fairly easy to get. You're just gonna throw out a couple hundred dollars for a nice looking Carson City. And this one was no different. So there's my 1882. Carson City out of the GSA holder. 1882 San Francisco NGC MS 64. 1882 S. So that last of my 64s in that series of San Francisco's as 83. Gets really tough and a little bit more expensive. But again, just very impressive with those early years of San Francisco striking Morgan dollars. Nice. Got some toning going on down there in the six o'clock region from seven to five, really. Beautiful, isn't it? Kind of all the way around. Yeah. And the other side too. Not as much, but it's there. Yep. A very nice San Francisco Morgan Silver Dollar, the 1882. S. 1883, Philadelphia. 1883, Philadelphia. You know, once again, these early Phillies. Fairly easy to get. This one looks really, really nice. This is a recent buy of mine. A recent addition. And just plucking off them real, real easy ones to get. Look at that. That's even got some mirroring going on. On the reverse, especially. Did not spend a lot of money on these. Definitely has not been cleaned. Beautiful coin from Philly. One of my favorites from Philly so far. On to the next one. 1883, New Orleans. 1883, Orleans. Yeah, a little bit of a dirtier one. I would definitely say this one would be of AU variety. A little worn. It's been used a little bit. Not cleaned. The back, I think, is even less lustrous as the front. But for now, you know, these aren't too hard to find. 
a decent price. And like I said, it's every bit of you. So we'll spend the money elsewhere to fill out some hole fillers. For now, this one's staying in one of those holes. The 1883 Orleans. Eighteen eighty three, Carson City. Wasn't even going to sit this one down in the easel. No way. Don't want any plastic banging up against this beautiful 1883 Carson City. For sure. Proof like. I mean, that thing is just. Look at that. Mirrored. Big time mirrored. You like this one, Winnie? Yes, she's frosty. Very frosty. Look at that. So definitely we'll be sending this one in for grading. It's for sure is not going to be out of this slab that we keep it in very often. But it's definitely worth it to get some photographs and just look at that. Proud of this one. All right. On to the next one. 1884, Philadelphia. 1884, Philly. Again, they meant it a lot. Easy to find. I keep them coming raw for these Phillies in these first few years because very easy to get. And you'll get one in a BU condition for a very reasonable price. No need to rush and get these ones graded. Now, one day I will, but for now, no rush on getting it graded. I like this raw BU example of the 1884 Philly. 1884, New Orleans. 1884, Orleans. The coin that started my silver journey. Both the numismatics and stacking actually picked this up at Silvertown in Winchester, Indiana and probably paid too much money for it. Actually, you can almost guarantee that, but... What an example of a very nice New Orleans strike. Now, it's funny. All these years, I see a lot of 1884 Orleans all over the place. I see them graded. I see other people having them roll. For some reason, 1884 Orleans really stood up well. They survived well. They actually struck them pretty decent back in that year. So this is just one of those examples of that. And I, I don't even want to guess what I paid at Silvertown. But... After I bought it, I couldn't help but keep on breaking this coin out. And take... playing with it. And then, uh, you know, that's where the addiction started. It was with this pretty lady uh, about two, two and a half years ago. All right, let's move on. 1884 Carson City in the GSA holder. The 1884 Carson City, again in a GSA holder. You know, not as nice as the 1882 that I have, but a fine example nonetheless. And the fourth and last of Carson Cities that I have so far of the 13 that are needed. So nine more to go, and there'll be some tough ones in there for sure, even for some slicks. But I love the Carson City. I love the Mint, and I love their strikes, and I love the history of the coin behind that Mint. A very short-lived Mint, very desirable one to have. So this is my fourth of them and final. So let's move on to other Morgans. 
1884, San Francisco. 1884, San Francisco. And these Morgans can be pricey and good condition, which is why, for now, I have it in eh, good, maybe. Maybe fine, I don't know. But, you know, I picked this up in a bin in Grand Rapids, Michigan, with Talking Bullion when we went to a coin show. And so it's a hole filler. You know, then right after 82S's, the 83S gets expensive, as well as the 84, 85, and so on there for a while in the mid-80s. And, you know, that's, that's an area I'm going to attack a little bit more going forward with the Morgans as we start to get some of these harder ones. So this is a nice hole filler. And perhaps, definitely an, up, well, not perhaps, definitely an upgrade one day. And uh, we'll see when that comes. Right now, it's going to be a hole filler. 1884S. Eighteen eighty five, Philadelphia. Eighteen eighty five, Philadelphia, and not to sound like a broken record, again these eighties Phillies are pretty easy to get, and most of mine are going to be raw until they start getting a little bit thinner in the population that they minted. But Philadelphia was running strong in these days, pumping out lots of coins. So. Again, very easy to get in BU condition, so I keep them raw. Unless you're going for something proof-like or whatever, I don't even know the populations of some of those for these coins, and I'm sort of keeping my proof-likes right now to Carson City. So we'll just keep this uh, 1885 Philly in this genuine, raw, unclean, beautiful-looking BU example. On to the next one. 1885, New Orleans. 1885, Orleans. Now, for a few years there, New Orleans was pumping out some pretty decent coins. 1884 is a good year for them. 85 is another good year. And even though my 84 Orleans is in a little bit better shape than this, this is still a pretty nice example for a New Orleans coin which was notoriously known for weak strikes. So, had a nice little period there where maybe some of their equipment was newer. I don't know. The 84 and 85 Orleans tend to have survived fairly well and some good examples out that out there. This is definitely one of them. The 1885 Orleans. 1886, Philadelphia, NGC, MS-64. 1886, Philly, NGC, MS-64 graded. And this is about the time in the series where I start getting a few Phillies that are graded. And not because the population is dying down, but I've sort of been working my way backwards a little bit. And looking at some of those early Phillies and the conditions I got them in, I just wasn't ready to start grading them yet. So, I sort of start getting a lot of my Phillies graded around this time. And every bit in MS-64, no doubt about it. Very nice looking coin. Now, I wish I would have jumped on 65s, but, you know, the price markup from a 64 to a 65 sort of keeps me a little bit more towards the 64 so that I can get more of them and try to go after my date set and try to see what kind of dent I can do out of those 95 business coins to get the whole set. You know, not got any kind of dream of getting them all. Just want to see how far I can get. And so this one will serve the purpose. The 1886 Philadelphia. 1887 Philadelphia. 1887 Philadelphia back to the raw got some gaps there don't have the Orleans nor the 
CC or the San Francisco. This is an area where I'm just got them one by one by Phillies for a little bit as I'm trying to pursue that date set, which of course I'm shy by two. I don't have the 93 or 95 in any mint mark. And that's what's keeping me from my date run. But the Phillies during this time period are bridging that gap from year to year for me without any other mints. San Francisco's are just a little pricey. And I just really haven't picked it up in Orleans in this area yet. And I don't even want to talk about the CCs. So, you know, again, Philadelphia still pumping them out in great numbers and doing nice strikes on them. This is a very lovely example of an 1887 Philadelphia. Eighteen eighty eight, Philadelphia. Eighteen eighty eight, Philadelphia. So, continuing with the Phillies here for a little bit. This one's got some interesting toning going around the rim. Yeah, the common Philly pumping them out. The mother mint is at work. A lot and usually has the greatest numbers out of any mint. Not a fine looking coin. The 1888 Philadelphia. 1888 New Orleans PCGS MS62. 1888 Orleans. One of my more rare MS-62. I usually like them in the 64s, as everyone knows. So this is a rarity that I just don't have that grade. But, you know, it's a whole filler. It's beautiful, though. I think that it may, because of the age of the grading, it may be a higher grade than... It could be. And they're not too far off the mark with it, though. She's got some, she's got some facial issues. That's kind of rude. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. 1888, Atlanta, Georgia. 1889 Philadelphia, another raw one. I've got a bunch of these early 80s, mid 80s, and late 80s Philadelphia. Like I said earlier, I'll have some more graded Phillies coming up. I had one in the 80s, but for the most part, I got a lot of raw ones too. I just continually pump out usually the most, so easiest to find. And they just all look pretty nice, you know. Has some nice cartwheeling going on. A lovely looking 1889 Philadelphia. 1889 New Orleans. 1889 Orleans. Not one of my better looking coins. I'm going to say a hole filler. I look at it and almost want to throw it in a coal bin, but, you know, definite upgrade down the road. And really, to the extent out of my entire Morgan Dollar collection, this is one of the worst conditions I have. Now, I realize when I go after some hard to get coins, like let's just pluck out of the air that 1893S. I would be more than happy to have it in this condition, but I'm probably going to get it in far worse condition and pay a decent amount on that coin yet, too. But for now, hole filler, the 1889 Orleans. 1890, Philadelphia. 1890, Philadelphia. 
a little ding on its rim there, but look at how clear that coin is. Just sparkles. Very good Philadelphia strike. Lovely looking coin. There you go. Another raw 1890 Philadelphia. Eighteen ninety, San Francisco. Eighteen ninety S, another beautiful example from San Francisco. That one just shines. You know, not a hard one to get. It can cost you, you know, a little bit more than your eighties of the San Francisco, but. Very nice example for their 1890. You know, going to be getting close to those hard years, the 92 through 95. So here's your the 1890, San Francisco. 1891, Philadelphia. 1891 Philadelphia raw I mean, it's just knocking a lot of these Phillies out this way they're easy they're fairly affordable not like in the early to mid 80s these 90s even in 91 get a little bit pricier not a ton but oh by next year in 92 whew, things change a bunch but for now 1891 is affordable. 1891, San Francisco. 1891, S. This would definitely be one of the additions I've gotten of late. Not a hard one to find in BU condition. As I like to say, sometimes it's got a little bit of liberation going on at the top. But a nice San Francisco. Definitely fits the bill for the nice Morgans that I like to have. And so here we go towards 1892. We get into the hard years. One of the last easier ones to get. The 1891 S. 1892, Philadelphia. 1892, Philadelphia. So here we are in the 92s. The 92s, 93s, 94s, 95s. What I always call the difficult years to get. You know, but the 1892 Philadelphia is one of the more easier ones to get of all those years and the most affordable that you'll see for some time to come. And I probably have about an AU example here. It's still going to run you, you know, maybe a bill for this if I try to remember what I paid for this 1892. But definitely a key in trying to get that date set done is completing the years of 92, 93, 94, and 95. So if you're going to start anywhere, the 92 Philly is a good way to go. 1894, New Orleans. 1894, Orleans. So yes, I skipped 1893. Just haven't had one jump out of this yet at an affordable price. Yeah, what you can find, if you can find them, is really poor quality for a high price. So we've been telling my LCS guy, which many of you know, that we're on the search for a 93 and 95 to complete that date set. 
But, you know, we want something that uh, we're taking our time on those two. And I didn't think that I would because, you know, I'd want to get that done as soon as I can. But really, those are two years, two of the hardest years to get. I'm going to make sure I make the money count for whatever I get. So we skip over here to the 1894 Orleans. This is an extra fine. Another one of those tough years. I mean, it's just those 90s. They're all going to be tough. And I'm missing two of them right now. And it may pain me, but I'm going to make sure, again, that my money buys me the best specimen that I can, particularly for those two years. So the 1894-O will have to do. Eighteen ninety six, Philadelphia. Eighteen ninety six, Philadelphia. So yes, again, we skip over the ninety five because it's still one of those ones I'm waiting on. So we go right to the ninety six, Philadelphia, and boom! In ninety six, they decided they're gonna strike, start striking these in quantities again, and boy, did they! And the ninety six Philly in particular has a lot made. And a lot of them have survived, and a lot of them have survived in excellent conditions. Almost everyone I know, everywhere I see, in 1896 Philly, it's in spectacular condition. And this one is the same. It's in great condition. And these are a dime a dozen. I would not pay over, really, 23 bucks for one of these because not hard to find, which is another reason why it's not graded. No need right now to have this 96 beautiful raw looking, definitely MS 60 something. Again, I'm not taking guesses in this Morgan dollar video like I've done in the past. I mean, you can take a pretty good guess. It's a fine looking coin as are most 1896 Philadelphia's. 1897, Philadelphia, NGC, MS-64. 1897, Philadelphia, NGC, MS-64. And again, they're pumping them out again. And Philly's doing a nice job at it. So I knew eventually I would start getting some more of these later Philadelphias graded. They'll start thinning out a little bit more as the early 1900s come on. As all mints start to thin the quantity back down again as they're running out of silver. And the demand has been met. There's quite a few of these floating around at the time. Enough for people to spend, so they don't really need to make as many. But right now, they sort of still are in the year 1897. And this is a nice MS-64 of Phillies. 1897, New Orleans. 1897, Orleans. I've only got a few like this in my collection. I've never really done a lot more research into this 1897-0. Oh, but it definitely is going to withstand an upgrade one day. Probably the second worst looking Morgan that I have in my collection that I still count as my date or mint mark series. So there you go. We'll not spend a lot of time on this lady. She definitely probably has a few, a few stories to tell. 1897, San Francisco. 1897, San Francisco. So after that ugly looking Orleans one, eh, gets better with the next one in my collection. And this one has some flaws in it, but also almost has some proof like qualities to it for sure. Yes, lovely on both sides. Definitely more mirroring on the front than the reverse, but not a bad raw example of the 1897 San Francisco. 
1898, Philadelphia, NGC, MS-64. 1898, Philadelphia, NGC graded MS-64. And these were very affordable to track down. I think that's why I didn't really have any of these in raw to begin off with. So I just started saying, well, MS-64, very affordable. Why not get it added to the graded section of Morgans that I have? And this one is a very nice example. An MS-64, the 1898 Philadelphia. Eighteen ninety eight, New Orleans, NGC, MS sixty four. Eighteen ninety eight, Orleans. Sticking with those MS sixty fours from NGC. Another affordable, you know, MS sixty four. Very nice strike on that one. Got a little toning mm -hmm. around the top of the rim. Very nice coin. Very nice example. The 1898 Orleans. 1899, New Orleans. NGC, MS-64. 1899, Orleans. NGC, MS-64. As most of my graded Morgans are MS-64. I love them. They have great detail, great cartwheeling, nice luster on them. This one is a perfect example of what an MS-64 coin will look like. And for the money, they're right in my ballpark. The 1899 New Orleans. 1900, Philadelphia. 1900, Philadelphia. So by this time, you know, they're continuing to wind down the population a little bit of Morgans and mintages are coming down. So they once again start to go scarce all the way through 1904 until boom, they are done. So this is a nice AU example of a 1900 Philly. You now you start getting into some of these tough to year dates again. Orleans seems to really take the lead on striking the most during this next period, which is why a lot of my next coins will be from there, with a surprise or so. Anyway, here's the 1900 Philadelphia. 1900 New Orleans NGC MS 64. 1900 Orleans. So like I said, I'm going to start having a few more graded here in the Orleans because there's more of them around. MS-64. The fine looking coin from Orleans. You know, when you get an MS-64, Orleans was doing okay that day. Whenever this baby was born, a nice looking example of the 1900 Orleans. 1901, New Orleans. 1901, Orleans, a raw example. A borderline AUBU. Yeah, it's a nice looking coin. 1901. A nice looking one from Orleans. 
the easier ones to get in these early 1900s for sure. So there you go. There's the 1901 Orleans. On to the next coin. Nineteen oh two, Philadelphia. Nineteen oh two, Philadelphia. You know what? Maybe AU. I don't know. It's a little war. Yeah, but again, it's always nice to have one of these. Any of these early nineteen hundred years, a little tougher to get. The herds are being thinned. And so this is a nice, uh, decent example of the 1902 Philly, perhaps upgradable one day. For now, hole filler. 1902, New Orleans, NGC, MS-64. 1902 Orleans NGC MS 64 graded. Yeah, if you haven't guessed, I really do like the NGC graded MS 64. Morgan's really price wise anymore. There's not much difference between PCGS and NGC. So why not? I like the way NGC's holders are. A little bit better in PCGS, although I'm I'm a fan of both, really. I mean, they both do a fantastic job grading coins. Two of everyone's favorites and mine as well. So there's the 1902 Orleans MS-64. On to the next one. 1903, Philadelphia. 1903 Philadelphia raw and this one a little story about it I ordered this one from infinity coins out of Idaho and I had been looking around for 1903 Philly and they seem to just be pricey everywhere and this one I got for 60 bucks and I couldn't believe they had this very beautiful BU example of a 1903 Philly for that price. I thought it was worth every penny. Thank you, Infinity Coins out of Idaho. On to the next one. 1904, New Orleans, PCGS, MS-64. 1904, Orleans, PCGS MS64. Yeah, I picked this one up on a vacation one time. We stopped at Mobile, Alabama. I forget the exact name of the shop. I know it was what Mobile, Alabama coins or something like that. I don't know. Can it beat the price on this that he had for it? I really do forget at the time what it was. You find a lot of these 1904 Orleans in great condition. They really did survive quite well. Escaped the melting, as you say. And so, pretty affordable. One of the more affordable ones to get in a decent grade for anything in the 1900s is the 1904-0. And this one is just one of those examples of how fine they still turn out today. The 1904 Orleans. 1904, San Francisco. 1904 S, San Francisco. There's uh, lots of stories about this particular coin, mostly in how they did not escape the melting pot. And uh, not too many of them were made as well. So finding this coin in any grade, I mean, this one probably still about a $40, $50 coin even looking at select out, but you start getting into better conditions with this coin and it gets quite pricey, a sleeper in my opinion. And I look it up sometime on the internet. There's lots of stories about this particular 1904 San Francisco and the fact that so many 
of them were melted. Nineteen twenty one, Philadelphia, NGC, MS sixty three. Nineteen twenty one, Philadelphia. NGC graded MS-63. Usually I got most of them in 64s as you have seen, but this one, one of my early purchases and my early, let's call not so wise days. So I decided to go ahead and order this MS-63 from, I think it was Vernon Coins out of Maryland. And they're a little bit pricey. So I'm sure I paid for this one a little bit. I've got plenty since then. Uh, other 1921 Philly Morgans. I have a whole tube of BU examples that I feel many of them are better than this one, but this is my graded one. This is the reason I bring it out. You know, the 1921 Phillies are a dime a dozen, but you got to have them to complete the series, right, Winnie? Yep. So you still pick them up, you know, at least one of, of every mint from 1921, which of course there's only three. You have Philly, Denver, and San Francisco. Denver, of course. The only time they ever did do Morgans, which this design is not like the others. It's a little different because they had to remake the dot dies off those. And yeah, they had made one since 1904. So everyone's usual least liked Morgan are the 1921s. And I'm the same way. But again, you got to have them to complete the series. So here's the 1921 Philly. Nineteen twenty one, Denver. Nineteen twenty one, Denver. Denver's only year of minting a Morgan silver dollar. And out of the three in nineteen twenty one, it's usually the most expensive one. I'm not sure why the mintages are fairly close to each other. I mean, Philadelphia did pump out a ton more than both San Francisco and Denver, but the mintages are not too far apart between Denver and San Francisco. Perhaps it's the fact that it's the only Morgan with a D on it, and maybe that's why they go for a little more. I've had another example of this in the past before. It's borderline coal, so just recently I went ahead and popped on a BU example of the 1921 D just to check the one off the list, and hey, guess what? It's off my list. 1921, San Francisco. And last but not least, the 1921 San Francisco to round this Morgan Dollar video to a close. Again, with that Denver that I just showed you before, this one was a recent purchase as well. I, for the life of me, don't know why I've never had a 1921 San Francisco until just recently, but... I knew it wasn't going to be hard to pick up, you know, relatively cheap, easy to get, easy in BU condition to get, no need to get it graded, you know, it's a beautiful coin. I mean, what can you say? About ready to celebrate 100 years here soon. So there you have it, folks. Let's hope they come out with uh, a peace dollar and a Morgan dollar next year. They're trying to do it. The one bill didn't get passed but they're trying to sneak it around another way. Let's hope they do. All right, we'll be back for a little wrap up here. The wrap up, my entire Morgan dollar collection. In front of you is 56 different date mint marks highlighted. There are the Philadelphias, which I have 23 of. I've got a pretty good hold on those ones. Next is the 17 New Orleans, and a few more to get of those here and there, but got a good handle on those. And here are the four Carson Cities, 13 needed in that collection, so I've got two in GSA and two in Proof-like. Possibly a deep mirror on the one we shall see. And then 11 San Francisco's which I'm going to start tackling a few more of those harder 80s years. So I need to dig into that more. And then the one and lonely only Denver down there in the bottom right-hand corner. 
So there's my yearly update on my Morgan Dollar collection. I hope you enjoyed the Magic Carpet Ride. Remember to like, subscribe, and all those other good things. We'll see you on the next video. Eighteen eighty, Philadelphia. Another excellent one in BU condition. As the cat just She likes her Morgans too. Well, I can't I can't do that. This has gotta be a serious one.